Okay, so um, we put a post up on the page today, okay. right? Um, Brandon Fouché's list of no-nos for dogs. Right. Um, and it caused a little bit of controversy. Mm -hmm. Some people agreed, some people did not agree. And uh, everyone was, was pretty, um, you know, polite and professional about it, but I thought that it would be a good idea to sort of go through your list of no-nos, mm -hmm. um, explain what they mean mm -hmm. um, for clarification, and then also go through the, the, the posts that I have listed here and mm -hmm. the comments and just sort of address them. Um, I think it was really great, first of all, that a lot of people participated. Yeah, that's good. It yeah. means they're observing. observing. Mm -hmm. right. And there's some strong opinions in here. Okay. So, um, but like first, <laughs> the first thing I thought I would bring up is that, so you have this right here, right? Uh -huh. Let's show it to the Fouché way, uh, Brandon Fouché's list of no-nos. This is the original, okay. right? But this one right here says list of no-nos for problem dogs. And so I want to clarify that on the Facebook post, it didn't say for oh, really? problem dogs. Okay. So that can cause some confusion there, but... Yeah, because the dogs that I work with generally are dogs that have issues. Right. So, yeah. <clears throat> um, but with that, this is still, there's a lot of good information on here. Good. So I thought, why don't we run through this list Mm -hmm. And um, and then maybe go through the commentary. Okay. And then you can explain and address what people's observations or concerns or objections and things like that. Okay. Or, um, and we're not looking to. We're just looking for to open up a dialogue, really. Sure. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So the Fouché way, Brandon's list of no nos for working with problem dogs. Right. Um, no tug of war. No games. Okay, games teach dogs how to challenge us in the wild. That is a death sentence. No, they, <laughs> let me read, read that. Games teach us how to, games teach dogs how to challenge us. In the wild, that's a death sentence. So no leader wants to be challenged by his pack. It's not a game in the wild. Domination is not a game. You cannot teach a dog to learn to bite. It's a death sentence for the dog if it bites a human. Okay. okay. Number one. Do you want to... Yeah, I can see where that needs to be explained a bit. No tug of war games. Tug of war teaches dogs to challenge us for our position. If you're the owner of a dog and you teach your dog to challenge you, then he sees that he can climb. You're giving him the ability to climb. Mm-hmm. At the same time, you're teaching him a behavior towards people in general. Mm -hmm. If you allow for your dog to growl and pull against you, to challenge you, you're teaching him that this is what you can do to people that make you feel insecure because they're conflicted when they're doing it with you anyway because you're sending two messages. I'm your leader, but I want you to challenge me for my position. Mm -hmm. To us, that's a game. Mm -hmm. In the wild, no leader wants to be challenged by one of his pack members. Right. Usually when that happens, someone's getting ready to lose their position. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so to a dog, this concept of play that we have, mm -hmm. P-L-A-Y, when we see two dogs doing that, they're really trying to determine who is more dominant than the other without actually fighting, so that when they finish, they're able to bond a mm -hmm. certain way. Right. Okay. That's a conflict for us because we should always want to appear that we are the leader and never give an indication that our dogs can disobey us. Right. That's what that okay. is supposed to mean. Okay, that makes mm -hmm. sense. Um, okay, so no squeaky toys. Mm -hmm. The purpose of the squeak is to resemble a wounded animal. So they, <laughs> they put it in a toy that looks like an animal and two things can happen. It teaches the dog to assert itself over smaller creatures, okay? Or it feels confident and not threatened by smaller animals. Okay. You know, since the beginning of working with dogs, 
we use what we call props. Today, we basically call them toys. Mm -hmm. But these things were used to, to produce a behavior with an adult that ultimately they would have a job. Right. Okay. Now, when you take a toy and put it in a stuffed animal and it squeaks, that represents a kill. Mm -hmm. That sound is a killing sound. And so it tells the dog's cortisol level to rise, the adrenaline to kick in, and they bite down, and it makes that sound. Right. Now, when dogs bite us and we say, ouch, you hurt me, we expect for them not to do it again. Mm -hmm. Right? But this toy makes them go in the opposite direction. Mm -hmm. The more the toy squeaks, the harder they bite. And so we're actually teaching a dog to move in a direction that will ultimately get him in trouble. Mm -hmm. Okay? So my dogs, when I'm raising them, when they bite something or something makes a noise as though they're hurt, mm -hmm. they're supposed to back away from that. You see? And if we teach our dogs to move forward with that, we end up finding situations where dogs become fear aggressive, mm -hmm. dominant aggressive, subdominant aggressive, and some dogs are multi-layered. So we don't want dogs to become more predators. They're that by nature. Right. And most of the dogs that get in trouble are those dogs who move forward with their aggression. Okay? Mm -hmm. And that's the problem that I have with toys because toys bring out the predatory side in our dogs. Mm -hmm. And that's the very thing that they get killed for. Right. That's why I wrote that. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, so no balls. Okay. So no throwing of objects or chasing after objects. It encourages the prey drive. It teaches the dog to go after objects and even people, bikers, skateboarders. The chase is for satisfying the stomach to eat and hunt and pray. Right. Some dogs eat their balls and toys. Again, you're waking up hormones and all of these things, when you're doing all this, you're waking up the whole wolf. That's a hard one. Because since the beginning of working with dogs, that's what we did with dogs. Mm -hmm. But I'm gonna have to go back again in the beginning when we were creating a working dog, we would use these props to make them chase after something. Mm -hmm. The problem is they're chasing after an inanimate object that ultimately will represent a live animal. Mm -hmm. But with our dogs, it never gets there. It's just this inanimate object mm -hmm. that pretty soon a dog will connect the dots and will associate chasing the ball with chasing something real, right. something live. Right. A lot of dogs, and you can check with vets, will tell you that people bring their dogs in because they swallow balls. Mm -hmm. The reason they're swallowing the ball is because when we throw that ball, we wake up a predatory hormone within the dog mm -hmm. to chase. Ultimately, all chasing was designed to satisfy the stomach. And so that's why they swallow it. Mm -hmm. And so they have to have their stomach open, <clears throat> right? So. If all chasing was designed to satisfy the stomach, then when we artificially make them chase an inanimate object, mm -hmm. then we are creating a neurotic behavior within our dog. Right. And they generally end up in trouble with that. Now, some people will say, some dogs can play this, or I've had dogs all my life, and uh, it's never been a problem. Of course, that's, that's a reality. Some dogs will never become aggressive, but they can become assertive and dominant, but never aggressive. But some dogs who have the ability to climb or they misinterpret the game itself can be, uh, become assertive, dominant, and aggressive. Mm -hmm. So a dog that can chase an inanimate object, such as a ball, is the same dog that can chase a skateboard, a bicycle, or ultimately someone just running by mm -hmm. because the purpose of throwing this inanimate object is to teach the dog to chase after things that are moving. Mm -hmm. you see, A more appropriate thing to do would be to throw food. Mm. The dog goes after the food 
chases it, bites down, kills it, eats it, it ends up in the stomach. That becomes a circle of life. Right. That's the period at the end of the sentence. That makes sense to the dog. It's complete. So we can just feed them by throwing food. Yeah, just throw <laughs> the food and make them chase after that. <laughs> make them work for their dinner. All chasing so. was designed to satisfy the stomach. Right. Okay, so um, no rough housing, uh -huh. right? So no wrestling and teaching dogs to bite and jump on you to challenge you. Right. You know, uh, this is a thing that mostly guys do. When mm -hmm. I was growing up, we used to wrestle with our dogs. Right. And we would teach them without, that's not our objective, but we would teach them to challenge us. Again, we have to think from the concept of the dog. Dogs expect for us to think like them and humans expect for dogs to understand what we want from them. Mm -hmm. Hence the human dog drama. This is where the problem comes in. Right. So we should never want our dogs to challenge us because we're actually imprinting on them a behavior that they will actually use towards other people. Mm -hmm. And again, every dog may not do this. Right. Uh, let's say a dog that doesn't end up being aggressive will end up being assertive and dominant. And mm -hmm. what I mean by that is, you know, an assertive or dominant dog may never be aggressive, but they will be more forward. Maybe they'll climb in your lap. Mm -hmm. Maybe they have no problem jumping on your head. Mm -hmm. Maybe they have no problem knocking a kid over, mm -hmm. okay, because they're too forward. They're too <clears> physical. <throat> right, right. When you are physical with your dog, you're teaching them to be physical with people. Okay. And ultimately, you know, let, let's say here's a couple that has a dog that's thinking about a baby. Mm -hmm. And so they've done all these things. Mm -hmm. uh, I like to tell people, if you're thinking about having children, then you should raise your dog as if that kid is already here. Mm -hmm. So you don't want to pump the dog up because you don't want the dog running around knocking the kid down. Mm -hmm. So we've got to look down that rabbit hole and see the light at the end of the tunnel and see where we want to be as a family, you see? Mm -hmm. And uh, you can't wait until that child is here and then change everything that you've ever done with your dog. Right. Then you create a whole nother set of problems that can revolve around jealousy of the dog towards the child. Mm -hmm. So, you know, this is, a, um, this is a springboard to other situations and problems. Right. Because we don't know how to address and explain to our dogs what we don't want because society has taught us to tell the dog what we like, which right. is the concept of the positive reinforcement. Right. But they don't understand that mind, that predatory mind. Mm -hmm. And in the wild, animals never practice positive reinforcement. They never give treats. They never say good boy. Mm -hmm. They only say what they don't like. Mm -hmm. And that means everything else they like until they don't like something else. Right. That's easy for an animal to process. Right. You see? Yeah, and then we, because I even have trouble with it too, you know, yeah. so, I mean, I don't as much anymore, but we have this thing where we think that they're going to think like us, right. and so we judge that, like, we're either holding them down or it's we're not practicing equality, yeah. but that's our stuff. That's the human yeah. stuff, the key stuff, right? to raising a perfect dog is the ability for that dog to socialize with everything in your world. Mm -hmm. But they cannot socialize it from a mindset of being a predator. The predator requires them to use their mouth to mm -hmm. solve problems. Mm -hmm. And that's where most dogs get in trouble. We've been raising our dogs in a very elementary way since the beginning that I can remember. Mm -hmm. okay? We never let them grow up. And that's a problem because... The predatory things that we do with our dog is something that we were told to do, but they are much, much more than that. Right. They have the ability to do more than just to use their mouth to solve problems. And I don't think anyone has ever really taught us other than the service dog. Mm -hmm. The service dogs are the most respected dogs on the planet. And these are dogs that help people that have handicaps, mm -hmm. you know which to me is the perfect dog. We don't live in a society now where the things that we are doing with our dog is, uh, is gonna get them a job later. Mm -hmm. Those jobs don't exist anymore. Right. Okay. 
So the, the laws now, they haven't changed, but they're now enforced with the laws that we have now, dangerous dog laws. If your dog does this and that, and it revolves around something aggression, then pretty, pretty much that dog is gonna be put to sleep. Right, right. So we need our dogs now, uh, we need to uh, provide jobs for them that are, they're elevated. You know, these are high value jobs. They're not the old jobs. Mm -hmm. They should be jobs where our dogs are pets, strictly for love and service. Mm -hmm. We need service dogs that love us and love other people and love their surroundings. And so our job is to teach them how to do that. Mm -hmm. So we have to have this paradigm shift in our thinking and we have to give up these childish ways that we're dealing with our dogs, let them grow up so that they become wonderful members of society. Mm -hmm. We're being forced into that. Right. The question is, how long will it be before the human being uh, accepts that? And how many dogs are gonna die in the interim? Mm -hmm. That's the question, before we actually accept what I'm saying. Right. So um, we're gonna get probably more into that, I'm sure, with some of this. So <laughs> sure. I'm just gonna keep going through this one right here. Okay. Um, all right, so no agility training, and competition work. Okay. Okay. That okay. Look, when I'm talking like this, I'm talking to the layperson mm -hmm. who goes to the shelter and gets a dog that they have no prior knowledge of their history. Mm -hmm. They're not professionals. They're not people that compete. Okay. Um, agility. It's a great sport for someone to do with their dog. But we must understand what is teaching the dog. If you're not a sports person and you don't have a, a dog that that's what they do for uh, your recreational thing, where you mm -hmm. compete and that sort of thing, then you're teaching your dog how to escape your yard. Mm -hmm. If your dog goes over an eight foot frame and then you bring it to 12 feet, but you have a six foot fence, then you're teaching your dog how to jump your fence. Right. Agility is over, under, around, through. We're teaching them how to overcome obstacles. I'm not saying there's not a place for that, but most people who take these classes are doing it so that they can bond with their dog, not understanding that they're teaching the dog a behavior. Mm -hmm. There are many ways to bond with your dog without teaching them how to escape, mm -hmm. without uh, increasing their uh, their physical agilities to escape, you know? Right. And that's mm -hmm. what I'm talking about here. Right. For people that are into mm -hmm. sports, fantastic if that's what you want to do. We're talking about the lay person. Right. Uh, okay, so no treats for controlling your dog. Mm -hmm. So you say treats are okay to teach your dog tricks, mm -hmm. but no treats when practicing how to eliminate aggression, because then you're rewarding them for thinking bad behavior. That's a deep one. Because we must understand how nature intended dogs to process information. Dogs live in the moment. And if a dog has an aggressive mindset, if he's thinking something aggressive, mm -hmm. and you do something positive, you are rewarding that mindset. Right. Okay? We've been taught that if a person gives our dog a treat, then that dog is going to say that person is a good person and I'm going to like them because you're giving me a treat. Mm -hmm. As if they couldn't multitask. Mm -hmm. As if they could not take the treat and still be aggressive. Right. And you will find that dogs will do that. Mm -hmm. Some dogs will take the treat and they won't be aggressive, but that dog is probably subordinate to begin with. It's just confused. Mm -hmm. Or maybe it's responding to the knock at the door, the bell at the door, and the person behind that door, and they're just barking, but they're not really aggressive, mm -hmm. okay? So they're not at that hormonal high where they're beyond the ability to become less aggressive, mm -hmm. less dominant. So we have to be careful with positive reinforcement because the way we do it when there is no stimulant is the same way we do it when there is a stimulant. So, mm -hmm. 
if a dog doesn't have anything in front of him that's making him aggressive, mm -hmm. and we do positive reinforcement, we're rubbing him and telling him he's a wonderful or she's a wonderful dog, mm -hmm. and then there is a stimulant there that the dog is barking at, and we say, it's okay, he's a good man, you shouldn't be barking at him. Mm -hmm. Well, that's the same way you did it when there wasn't a stimulant. Mm -hmm. So how now can the dog determine that when you're doing it now, that you're not rewarding the behavior? Right. You see? We, with our frontal lobe, is so much bigger than the dog, so we have the ability to go back and forth like that. Right. Um, dogs don't, and, and that's a fact. Mm -hmm. When you're dealing with the gen genetic component of the dog, and, and, and they, in the wild, what they think is this. The leader always says what they don't like, mm -hmm. okay? So it makes it easier to figure out what they shouldn't be doing. But we confuse them by telling them what they like, what we like, and then telling them what we don't like. But in the wild, they don't do that. Mm -hmm. If it's something that's acceptable, they don't care. Right. You see? And so it's difficult for us to, to follow that because we want to tell them that they're good, mm -hmm. right? That life is wonderful, but that's how dogs feel already. <laughs> <laughs> they're not like us. Okay, so then um, the last one on here was no reaching. Do not reach for a dog. That's a dominant thing done in a submissive way. It confuses the dog. Right. You know, that actually came about through a lot about how people discipline their dogs. You know, there's this thing where you see people discipline with their hands or discipline with their feet, right? Mm -hmm. Or hit dogs, mm -hmm. physically hit dogs. Now, everything is done with the hand, you know? So how then can a dog uh, decipher whether a person is going to reach for them in a good way mm -hmm. if they've been disciplined with their hand? Mm -hmm. Also, because that's the case, when you reach for a dog, we're generally giving them something to put into their mouth. Mm, mm -hmm. You see? Whether it's a toy or a treat or food or whatever, we reach this way to do it. So if we've got a dog that has a behavioral issue that is revolved around aggression with people, you do not want to reach to them and say, I'm a wonderful person. Mm -hmm. Most dogs that want to be touched come right up to you rub their body against you, mm -hmm. you know that they want to be touched. Right. If we try to bribe them, and I call this doing a dominant thing in a submissive way, meaning that we go into their space, which is a dominant thing to do, and then when we get there, we say, oh, what a cute boy, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. We become submissive. At that moment, with that particular dog that has a problem with people, sees weakness. Mm -hmm. And then they take the opportunity to discipline you. And it becomes a discipline bite. Right. And that's how most people are bit. So do not reach for dogs. It's a good idea not to reach for any dog unless they do, they come in to your space. Mm -hmm. We should not teach people to reach out like this. That's like offering the dog mm -hmm. something. And they see that as a sign of weakness. Mm -hmm. And they take advantage of that because then that allows for them to climb. And it's crazy because for decades we've been teaching us, even as a kid I was taught to, and I see parents do it now, reach your hand out and, you know, let them smell you. Mm -hmm. It's like it's a part of our program. <laughs> you know, there's an old saying, when I was a child, I thought like a child. When I became an adult, I threw away those childish games. I mean, we have come so far with dogs that we have to elevate our thinking uh, revolved around aggression mm -hmm. because that is the number one killer of dogs. Right. So if we love our dogs, we as human beings need to learn more about aggression and how we contribute to producing aggression in our dogs by not knowing how to eliminate stress so that dogs can live. And if that's what we want to do, if that's our priority, if we want to save dogs, then we need to know how to approach them. We need to know how to think like them because dogs 
could only think like a dog. Mm -hmm. Your dog cannot think like a cat or a rabbit or a horse or any other creature. And so it expects for you to think like them. Mm -hmm. So we need to know this mind mm -hmm. and then be, because we know it, we need to be able to extract what we need as human beings from that mm -hmm. so that we're satisfied too, mm -hmm. you see? And there's a way to do that. Mm -hmm. That's what that means. So um, let's take a little break and turn that off. Okay.